Um, we are talking and we are spending a lot of time talking at the moment about vaccines. Vaccines have come much faster than they normally would uh, and they're going to become a reality next year. What does that mean? What does that mean for therapeutics? What does it mean for companies like you? Well, first of all, it's great news for all of us because uh, the efficacy of the vaccines is somewhat surprising. They work incredibly well. And I think that's great news for everybody. Uh, if you think about, though, bringing the pandemic to an end, uh, where through herd immunity, where enough people are protected so the virus doesn't spread anymore, you probably need at least 70% of the people uh, with who, who are um, immune. Uh, and that means probably 75% of the population has to get um, immunized. I, I don't see that happening anytime soon, unfortunately. And so my view is there are going to be continued to be COVID cases for some years into the future. Uh, and those people will need therapies. Uh, the, the antibodies that we're developing, others are developing, seem to work in the early stage um, stages of the disease. I think Eli Lilly had uh, good data with their antibodies. Uh, they may or may not work in hospitalized patients, but I, I think um, as the vaccines get spread, the incidence of infection will go down, the risk of getting it will go down. There'll still be many millions of cases, uh, and those people now will have access to drugs that can prevent, uh, hopefully prevent or reduce the most severe consequences so of let's the get, disease. So let's get to that. Uh, you're working on a phase three study of your antibody treatment. Uh, how effective is it? What does it do? When can uh, people get it? Yeah, so look, antibodies are, are molecules that your body produces in response to an infection. They're one of the principal ways the immune system can fight off an infection. Uh, we are developing antibodies, others are uh, as well, uh, to, uh, to have isolated antibodies from patients who recover from a disease, identify the most effective antibodies, produce them in high quantities, and reintroduce them back into, into patients to uh, provide uh, protection. And so uh, they seem to work. I think Lily has uh, good data to show that. We will have our data uh, in the first part of next year, potentially as early as January, so potentially next month. Um, and uh, assuming they work, we'll, of course, uh, move them forward as rapidly as we can. Uh, Lily's antibodies are available now uh, in limited supplies. Ours will be available uh, probably uh, towards the end of the first quarter of next year. And uh, just like the vaccines, so the on. antibodies will be in limited supply, and uh, we and others are just manufacturing them as fast as we can at risk, uh, so that should they should they uh, prove effective, we'll, we'll have as much supply as we can. George, we take a step back and think about the advances that have been made during this coronavirus period. What is your assessment? I'm thinking about how many of the the advances are going to be applicable elsewhere. I'm wondering where this leaves broadly the healthcare sector. You've worked in, in many areas of the industry. I'm just kind of wondering, how much has it changed? Well, so many things have changed uh, because of the urgency of bringing forward drugs. So, you know, we've, we and obviously the vaccine makers, Pfizer, Moderna, have condensed what is normally a multi-year process into under a year. Uh, to do that required changes in business relationships, how you think about collaborating with other companies. It, uh, it required change in how we interact with the regulatory authorities, how we think about manufacturing. And so all of that has changed in a way. Uh, that I, much of which I think will maintain would be maintained after this. Not all of it, because part of that speed has been just basically putting aside everything else and focusing solely on this. And so, but once we get back to a more normal mode of operations, I think many of the ways we're collaborating, the uh, interactions with regulatory agencies, manufacturing, many of those changes will stay in place. Um, what's it like going? What's it like to enroll people in studies right now? Um, it, because things are happening so quickly, like why would someone take a placebo when they know that there's something they could actually go get, like right around the corner? Can you talk to me about how the process is also altered? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so far, uh, it's not altered very much at all. Um, you're right, though. If if <clears throat> vaccines or drugs become widely available, it's very difficult to test uh, new drugs because who, who wants to be in a clinical trial when you can take a drug that, that you know works? So that is always a problem. It's not a problem yet because the supplies are so limited. So few people have access to any drugs or, or vaccines at this point. So we have seen no impact 
uh, up until this point in our recruitment in our clinical trials. I think the ironic thing about the 95% uh, effective vaccines is that future vaccines uh, <laughs> have a very high barrier to cross. And uh, if, if I were developing a vaccine a year from now, I think that would be a very difficult undertaking. Mm -hmm. So, but um, uh, for the therapeutics, I think the, the field is still wide open. What is your assessment of the, the next challenge, which now seems to be manufacturing? The, well, first of all, manufacturing biological drugs, whether they're vaccines or antibodies, is a complex process. It's highly regulated. We have to make sure everything is safe. It uh, has to be done under uh, very tightly uh, specified standards of, for safety and reproducibility so that you know what you make this year is the same as what you make next year and the, and the following year. Um, that process normally takes uh, some years to develop. Uh, in these cases now, we've done it very quickly <laughs> in a few months. Um, and the, um, the materials have to be made in very large scale uh, plants. There are a limited number of those plants. Uh, most of them are already making other products. So the capacity to make drugs for COVID is somewhat uh, limited. Uh, and so we have had to free up capacity, find new capacity, wait for capacity to um, develop. Uh, it takes probably three years to build a new plant. So that's not in enough time. I mean, it's too late for COVID. Um, and so everybody's been scrambling, uh, as have we. Uh, much of the capacity um, to make these molecules exists outside of the United States. A lot of plants in Europe, a lot of plants in Asia, some plants also in the U.S. And so we and others have been uh, trying to access uh, all of the manufacturing mm -hmm. capacity that we can at risk, not knowing if our drugs, and we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars put at risk, not knowing whether the drug works. 